standard. Here's your standard residential tenancy agreement. So the first thing is the landlord, that's me up top, and the tenant phone number. Make sure you put the tenant phone number on your lease so you don't be scrambling for the phone number like I do. Number one, uh, in consideration of, this is all legal stuff. The landlord agrees to rent, tenant agrees to buy townhouse described at 123 Main Street, that's the premises. So that's your main thing right there. Next page, and all this stuff is just legal. That's the standard le standard leasing stuff. Let's go to the terms. Number number five. The term of this lease starts noon this day, ends at noon. I do a year lease. Number six. Any notice to terminate this tenancy must be provided to the landlord 60 days prior to move out. I want 60 day notice if you're moving out of my house, right? So I can get my new tenant buyer my new tenant buyer lined up. Now here's the golden nugget. Don't miss this one, guys. Don't miss this one. There is no security deposit. None. Zilch. Nada. I don't want you taking any money on this document because over here we're going to get our down payment. This is where we get our option fee on another document. So when the judge or when you go to, when your tenant, God forbid, stops paying, all we have to do to get them out, we go to the eviction court and we have our lease. We exercise our possession. Remember our possession. That's what we do when we get our eviction and we take possession back over here. So being the owner, you get to flip flop with owner rights. When you possess the house, you can come and go as you please with your quiet enjoyment, but it has to be granted by law. You can't just go in there and kick the people out. You know, that, that wouldn't be cool. But number six, there is no security deposit on lease options. Number seven, with consent of the land, with the consent of the landlord after the natural expiration of this lease, a new tenancy, one year terms, will automatically do one year, so automatically be created. All right, let's keep going down here. Number 10, here's a, some more golden nuggets for you. Subject to the provisions of this lease, the rent for the premises is X, whatever you want to put. Rent is due on the 28th of each month. Our rents are due on the 28th and they are late. Keep moving each month and will be considered late on the 1st. If rent is not paid, received by the first of the month, then a 10% late charge of $86 will apply. Now, how do we do that? Because we wrote it in the lease. I don't want you collecting no rents on the first of the month. Don't forget about that stuff, because when you do it on the first, then you give them a grace period of three to four days, then it's the fifth of the month, and you have to wait to mail out your pay or quit notice, right? And I don't want you waiting that long. I need this stuff done today. And if you watched one of my last, I followed one of my millionaire real estate investors went broke. I followed his life for five years. You have to stay on top of this. Rent's due on the 28th of the month, late by the first, all right? You can keep reading down here. Uh, number 11, the rent shall be paid to me, Chris Haskins. Cash his check or money order. We don't take checks. How many checks have turned rubber on me in my career? I cannot count. Back in 2007, I said, you know what, freak this. No more checks. I am refuse I refuse to take another check. I won't do it. So, uh, just do on the number 11, keeping on here, Monday order on or before the 28th of, of each month. The lease to the landlord, mail to. I want the rent mailed to me, 123 Main Street. You give them a mailing address, or sometimes I just give them my bank, my bank account number. I give them a deposit slip. They can go right to the bank, deposit that money, right into the bank into the bank account into the into the the business bank account so you don't even have to worry about interfacing with them but either way is fine all right number 12 quiet enjoyment you already know that mm, okay some more nuggets here here's your lease for your lease option number 15 the tenant at its sole expense shall keep and maintain the premises yes shall keep and maintain yard front yard backyard decks appurtenances and finish and furnishings in good and sanitary condition and repair during the terms of this lease and any renewal of this lease any repairs to the premises and its appliances will, the, will be the sole responsibility of the tenant and shall be repaired by the tenant landlords shall be able to inspect premises at any time within one day notice to the tenant to check for damages and repairs listen I don't want we're done maintenance I'm out of the business you have any problems don't call me you know we're just like the mortgage company we are just like the mortgage company if um, you're watching this I'm hoping you own your own house when something breaks in your property how would you feel if you call the mortgage company what are they gonna say to you hey mr. mr. lender uh, my toilet stopped up the lender is gonna look at you 
I'm like, you know, what do you want me to do? I can't, I can't help you. You bought the house, you pay for it. You don't pay, you don't stay. The lender cares not about any of the repairs that happens to your property. So you put it in your lease. Now, will they stand up in court? I don't know, but the judge will at least let give me possession if the tenant stops paying based on the lease. They might say, hey, Chris, this lease is unconstitutional or against code or something. Will it stand up in court? Not sure. But if they stop paying, you can at least get them out, right? Okay, last thing I'm going to go over, number 18. You got to have 18. The tenant will keep the premises reasonably clean and smoke free. I try not to rent to smokers. I have some in my arsenal, in my squad, but I don't like renting, renting to smokers because smoke, not only it kills you, but it gets into the walls, it just tears the house up, it gets into your central heating and air, into the blower, and it's just hell getting it out. So try not to rent to smokers if you can help it. All right, next, let's go to our option. I love it. This is my favorite part here. This is where you're going to get the big dollars. And I'm going to kind of show you a little bit towards the end. How do we determine? How do we determine whether we try to get a large down payment or small down payment, depending on what your monthly payment will be? And, and what type of value are we going to pass on to our tenant buyers regarding the down payment that they bring? We want to make sure that they have an, a payment that's affordable, right? We want to give value to our community. And the good thing about these houses, they don't even have to be pretty. I'm going to flash up some houses that I recently did. They were completely ugly. One didn't even have a kitchen. Well, they had a kitchen, but it was ugly. So I'm going to, and the tenant buyer renovated the kitchen. Two of them renovated two kitchens uh, in the property. So I didn't have to pull out a penny on a kitchen renovation. So let's get to our, let's get to our, option to purchase agreement yes the option to purchase agreement and once again i'm gonna flash it on the screen everything and i mean everything is standard standard in my business it's the standard option to purchase i love it and whenever whenever somebody asks i'll just they have a question i say hey that's standard you know that's standard there how we do things and you too if somebody asks you a question just tell them it's standard don't sweat it. Uh, what's this right here? Oh, well, that's standard. Okay, standard option to purchase. So we got our lease part of the lease option out of the way. All right, we got that out of the way. We went over the standard lease agreement for you. This is gonna get the tenant quiet enjoyment. It's gonna allow you to evict them if you have to. That lease will give you the ability to go in and kind of get them out if you need to, because we don't wanna have any type of possession on this option agreement. This is just for, remember we said disposition. Our owner rights, disposition. Our owner rights is for the, the option that's gonna allow us to dispose, dispose of this property. We're disposing it onto our tenant buyer. In, a, in, a, in an ordinary lease, the tenant has no power over disposition. When we do lease option, we give disposition to our tenant buyer, okay? So I want you to understand that. It might take a while to sink in, but let me work it for you. Let me work it, I'm here working for you. Okay, let's go over our option agreement, our standard option to purchase. This agreement dated blank is by and between landlord seller. Oh, I gotta take, thank my boy Tony Horner helped me put, well, I got a lot of this stuff from him. Thank you, brother Tony. Stand, um, seller landlord. It's going to be you, right? Me and you as management and the buyer tenant, whoever that may be for good and valuable consideration for the dwelling located at one, two, three main street, whatever that's going to be under the following conditions. First one, we got to have this one. Whew. The settled landlord grants the buyer tenant the right to purchase at any time during the time, during the option period of blank. Now, usually I like to make sure this is very well defined. Because when you go to court, somebody gave you a $10,000 option fee, you don't want the judge questioning this at all. So, I just, I always put a date in there. Let's say it's 7, 7, 2000, 2020. Because you can give them, you don't want them to, you don't want them to buy it immediately. Let's say you want to give them two years. I don't know when you're watching this, but we'll give them between July 7th, 2020. To July 7, 2022. 
So that's two years when they come, that's whenever you do it, you're gonna give them specific time period when they wanna exercise this option. And if it's outside of this time period, guess what? They're short, they're short. They're, they're not gonna be able to, uh, uh, to exercise this option without your involvement because you wanna be involved in the disposition, right? That's where the money comes in. So you give them a specific time frame, whatever that is, you choose. It could be two, 2025, 24, whatever you wanna do. Okay, let's move on to the rest of this one here. Rent must be paid exactly on the date it is due and as written in the separate rental agreement. Completely separate, right? There's no grace period. The option can be exercised during the option period for the price of. All right, whatever price you want, you pick it. Sometimes I just put a praise value because you can't sell it for more than what it's gonna praise for anyway, so it doesn't matter. Let's skip down to option consideration or option fee. This is my favorite part of this whole thing, guys, my favorite part. To the buyer tenant will pay the seller landlord a non-refundable. Non-refundable means you can't get it back. Option consideration, we don't say option deposit. Deposit might be misconstrued as being able to get back, right? Option consideration or option fee of. I like to get, you know, if I can get $5,000, $3,000 out of uh, whatever you can get for the above residence and it will be and it will be applied to in full to the purchase price if the option is exercised. If biggest word in the dictionary, right? If the option is exercised. So, only will this down payment be applied to the purchase price if they buy. This consideration was paid on whatever date. Also, this consideration is non-refundable. Should the option not be exercised by the tenant buyer, there will be no refund or credit of any monthly rental payments or option consideration. And I love this part. You gotta thank my brother Tony. Initial, I want my buyer to initial here that they read this is non-refundable and it will not be returned if they don't buy the house. I've had people say when their two years is up, I've had people tell me, well Chris, when, when do I get my option feedback? I'm like, what do you mean? Matter of fact, I had an attorney call me one time on behalf of a tenant buyer that gave me a down payment and they decided not to move in. And I'm like, you know, it's not my, it's not my decision or my problem that you decided not to move in. It's not fair. I took the house off the market for you to move in and then you decided to change your mind. God told you whatever. It's not my problem. So, non-refundable, make sure that they initial right here so they know what's going on. Those are the main points for the option here. Yes, those are the main points. So you gotta have, make sure you get your option down payment. Try to get 5,000 out of people. But when we're doing these things, we have to take into consideration a lot of moving parts, right? So here's our tenant. So let's say as an owner on this side, we got our down payment. we've got our monthly payment. Right, we've got down payment and monthly payment. Let's say if you're an owner, your monthly payment is $750. And the market rents for your area is only, let's say the market rent is $850. A lot of times I try not to worry about this spread in here if I can get a larger down payment. I will be flexible on getting a smaller down payment if I have to charge them a little more monthly rent. All right, so you have to determine which one is best for you. If you have a high monthly payment, if you have a high monthly payment, you might have to get a, a smaller down payment, right? So high monthly payment, let's just do this. High monthly payment, you're gonna get a smaller down payment, like let's do it like this. Smaller down payment for higher, higher rent because you need to pass on value to your tenant buyer. If your tenant buyer has a high down payment and a high monthly payment, it's gonna be very unlikely that they're gonna be able to stay in this property. Hence, they would have good credit and they wouldn't be where they are today, right? So let's do this. You gotta, if you have a high, if your mortgage, 750, you're only making $100 a month, I would try to get, I would try to, 
I wouldn't care about making any money, but I would try to give them, I would just, I wouldn't cash flow this at all. I wouldn't even care about the $100 a month. I would focus on getting a higher down payment. I wouldn't even, $100 a month isn't gonna make or break me, right? Now, if you wanna try to push this up to get, let's say you wanna get, if, you're, if the rents in your area is $1,000, Try to get that spread between the 750 and the 1,000, but then you want to try to get you can you can bargain with a lower down payment, right? So if you you got to kind of how do you say seesaw this thing? If you can sacrifice the monthly payment and not worry about making cash flow, get a higher down payment. If you want to make the cash flow here, the the, the 250 something, 89, yeah, the 250 a month. Go for the lower down payment. You don't want to, how can I do it? You don't want to hit people in the head on both sides. Well, I, I'm not saying you don't want to, you don't want to, but if you, you know, if you can try to work with people and get them in the property, it's a lot better getting someone good in the property as opposed to try, you know, just trying to sock it to them. I've learned that over the years, when you try to sock it to people and get extract all the value out of a person, they don't last right they don't last it's kind of like when people they watch my youtube channels for free then they want to email me all day and ask questions for free it's like i can only give you so much of my time right so monthly payment if you can sacrifice monthly payment get a bigger down payment if you want the cash flow on the monthly payment help your tenant buyer stay in the property and give them a lower down payment all right because they're probably going to have to do some work to make this house livable anyway, right? So do what you can to help people out. Okay, that's our lesson one on lease options. There's so much to talk about regarding lease options. If you've got any questions on this thing, don't be scared to email me. Not so much, but email me. I will return some emails. Subscribe to my channel. Share this content with other people that need to get out of the rental business, what per se because I don't want you doing leases. I want you doing regular lease options. Come on in, Calvino. You can come in. Come on in. I want you doing regular, I want you doing lease options. No more rentals. All right, so this is Chris Haskins with realestateroundup.com. Like the content. Once again, share it. And I'll see you next time on the Real Estate Roundup. God bless.